let me let me bring this back a little bit because obviously that's kind of where I, I want to end this conversation. But um, what does the coronavirus mean? You, you talked about the the domino effect, right? And how this is possibly the first domino. And I, you know, I might think that's arguable, but hey, whatever domino, first, second, third, whatever it is, it's certainly a big piece falling into place now. And what, what does it mean for or what you described as the everything bubble? And I mean, it's not just you; it's a lot of people here on Real Vision. And and, and what does it mean for the the fragility of financial markets? And is it, uh, uh, you know, a warning sign for the rest of our systems that this everything bubble popping could be, you know, a sign of more, you know, it could be the start the start of the storm, so to speak. Yeah, I mean that that's how I see it. And and another thing just to for 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 listeners to check out, I wrote a, a series as well in 2018 called The Path to 2025 where I laid out that I thought the world would completely change from that point, you know, on into 2025. Right, the, the, everything. I'm, and I'm talking like geopolitics, financial markets, economy, um, centralization versus decentralization. But virtually every single thing that we've we've known since we were born, you know, about how the world works. I believe almost all of those things will be completely turned on their head by around 2025. Um, I think that, and that's sort of the, the window. So we're right in that window. Um, so if you think about, you know, the coronavirus as a domino. Well, think about um, one of the things I mentioned in the shaky foundation piece. Mm -hmm. Going into the coronavirus, we we had built an equity bubble, another equity bubble. Um, we had b a bond bubble that's bigger, that's even bigger than the equity bubble. Because you know, as we were discussing long term trends, my entire life, again, my entire life has been a bondable market for sovereigns. All right. I mean, it was it was in the it was in the um, in the late 70s or early 80s where interest rates were at its highest and they've been coming down for 40 years. If you think about if you think about that in a lower interest rate environment for 40 years, when that reverses, everything reverses. OK, everything changes. You can't, you know, because all of the so many of the behaviors, whether it's the military, whether it's the financial empire or it's just your 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 average asset prices that are boosted, have been boosted for 40 years because of low interest rates. All of those things start to go into reverse or break down. OK, so I'm I'm seeing the coronavirus it's going to start creating pressure. I don't know if you saw this, but a lot of companies are now uh, drawing down revolvers. Um, they, they announced that yesterday. Um, so it's, you're starting to see. You're probably going to start to see liquidity tightening. And now you saw what the Fed announced today with I think what was it, 500 billion over or a trillion dollars in repos. Um, the, the point is. Uh, Companies are going to start struggling. Individuals are going to start struggling. That's going to impact spending, but it's also going to impact credit. And credit, of course, as I just mentioned, is the biggest, most important market in the world. And credit and, and low interest rates have kept all of this, all of the behaviors, whether it's geopolitical or domestic consumption behaviors, it's underpinned all of it. So if that, again, if that trend is, is in the beginning stages of reversing, it's not, it, yes, there, there, you know, there's this blow up. And when you watch the stock market decline, you say, oh, you know, oh, wow, it's just, we're just going to be in this big blow up forever. It's not quite that. You have to look at it like we're, we're, we're at the, probably at the beginning of, of a multi-decade trend reversal. And the, the, the consequences of that are, um, you know, impossible to fully appreciate at this point. But you, what you, but what you can say is, if you have an empire and a domestic economy that's been built on a forty-year bond uh, or interest rate bull market, uh, if that ends, everything, everything about the way the world is constructed will end. Yeah, I mean, at the editorial team here in Real Vision, we have a, a Slack channel that has been screaming about you know cruise line credit and and you know. Um, even casinos and, and every everything, every section of the credit market seems to be at least feeling that pressure, the liquidity pressure that, that you just talked about.